again YouTube welcome back to my channel my name is McPato this is McPato PC and today I'm bringing you guys a quick video it's not it didn't end up being the video I wanted to make but there's uh, reasons for that involving hardware changes but um, so what I've done is I've summarized it into a chart this also will make the video much shorter so it's probably a win-win uh, for anyone looking for information like that there's a link or there's a timestamp in the description down below if you just want to see the numbers. Uh, I'm just going to show averages uh, in this video. As far as the 1% lows, everything was really good. Uh, within 20 FPS of whatever number you see as the average, you would see uh, for the lows and often it wasn't even anywhere near 20 lower. So much, much closer to the average, but just to throw it out there there's nothing that stood out as uh, abnormal or terrible in terms of uh, one percent lows or low fps so just for time and fluidity we're just going to look at the averages so my my goal in this video was just to see if i could test a large number of games using my vega 64 at the time this was done on my air vega 64 but i've now switched to a liquid vega 64 so i used an overclock which is pretty pretty safe i think for most people to attain and that was a uh, 1645 megahertz p7 overclock the slider slid all the way to 50 percent power and the hbm at 1035 Megahertz. Uh, Morpheus 2 cooler on there at the time, so temperatures were not an issue at all. But even with a blower, I think you'd have no problem getting those sorts of numbers for most people. So, with that said, my goal was just to sort of test a bunch of games at 3440 by 1440 with my Vega and my Ryzen 5 2600, which is overclocked to 4.2 gigahertz. I just wanted to see how many games it could run using a high preset at 60 FPS or better. Uh, and we've got, of course, Navi coming out soon, in about a month. And I think a lot of people with Vega might be wondering, is it worth upgrading? Is this something I should look into? And there's gonna be a, obviously a bunch of benchmarks coming your way as far as forms. So this maybe could serve as sort of a one data, uh, you know, one data point to, to reference or compare. Obviously, you don't want to base your purchase on just one person's review, but if you can find other data similar, obviously it will help you. This might be games that others haven't tested or in a resolution they haven't tested, that kind of thing. But anyway, just to go over the, the system specs, uh, again, I'm running, or I was running a Ryzen 2600 at 4.2 gigahertz, which I think did limit me in a few of the games, I'll be honest. Assassin's Creed games seem to really need a lot of uh, CPU power. I've since upgraded to a 2700 Ryzen and there is a performance difference in those games. Uh, I think Division 2 also, but anyway, some of the games I will say were probably somewhat limited in uh, their performance by the Ryzen 5 2600, though at the 3440 by 1440 resolution, it's pretty minor. I'm talking like one or two FPS, so nothing, nothing too far outside the norm. I also got some G Skills Trident Z memory, which replaced my old Rip Jaws 5. That's running at the uh, XMP profile of 3000. So that was that was a little upgrade there in my memory as well from previous benchmarks. So that was good. Vega 64 Air. It was the reference card but with a Morpheus 2 cooler on it and again uh, running at 1645 megahertz on P7 power slider all the way to 50% and the HBM at 1035 megahertz with a custom fan profile but again shouldn't have problems with the blower I used to have a, obviously the reference blower on there and I had no issue getting these settings. I tried to use something pretty safe for most people running a Vega 64. That pretty much covers the, the sort of hardware part of it. So let's get right into the charts and see how it performed. 
So looking at the charts here, we can quickly see that Vega 64, which is about two years old now, still performs pretty well. And again, this is at 3440 by 1440 ultra wide resolution. So anyone running uh, 1440p or 1080p would obviously have no problem getting the 60 FPS in every title. Probably even 80 to 90 FPS would be no problem. Again, this is a high, a high preset with the exception of the Division 2, which I used Hardware Unbox's optimized settings to uh, sort of customize that. But it, it ends up being somewhere between high and ultra in terms of the settings. Bit of a custom mix there. So probably if you use the pure high, you might be able to get the, uh, the 60, but um, I find this is a, a really good mix of visual uh, sort of settings and performance. And if you're wondering why I'm using DX11 on the Division 2, for some reason my system stutters horribly when using DX12, like really bad. So I play with DirectX 11, it runs nice and smooth. In terms of uh, FPS difference, it's only one or two FPS. I've tested both and it works out to, I think I was getting 58 with DirectX 12. So not much of a, a decrease there at all. So as you can see, we've got 24 games tested, a good mix of old and new. When I say old, I mean like the last couple of years and quite a few 2019 titles here as well. And of the 24, I was able to get 60 FPS as an average in 20 of the games. So about 83% had no pro, well, with the <laughs> Shadow of the Tomb Raider, they're right on the edge at 60. And if you've ever run that benchmark, it, it does vary quite a bit in terms of the performance. That first part kind of has lower scores and then the last scene you get higher scores. So it's kind of a, it's a good representation as far as average, but it did go, you know, into the seventies, maybe even low eighties in some parts and into the fifties in other parts. So obviously that's what an average is, but that one's right on the line. Older games, obviously, you have no problem with like Batman Arkham Knight and uh, Borderlands 2, Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, even uh, Vermintide 2, which is a new title, worked pretty well. So overall, I'm pretty impressed with Vega uh, 64 and it put up some good numbers here at high. I will say if you switch this to Ultra at 3440 by 1440, you would probably get about half of the games not running at 60 FPS. Definitely games like Anthem, uh, Dirt Rally 2, Hitman 2, Just Cause 4, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, uh, just to name a couple there would fall underneath that 60 FPS average. Probably somewhere in the low 50s even. So quite a difference using the high versus ultra. So as you guys can see, Vega 64 still has quite a bit of performance in it even in 2019, two years old, forming like a champ in my opinion. We're gonna get cards, you know, like the the, the RX uh, 57 XT and the 5700. And in my opinion, they're gonna be probably right around what I'm getting here in these games. Maybe a little bit higher overall for the price. You can pick up a used Vega 64 or even a new one, depending where you live, or less than what uh, these cards are gonna be coming out at. It's just not worth upgrading in my case at this time. I'm going to stick with my Vega, especially now that I've got a liquid Vega and it runs at 1720 to 1750 almost in every game, no problem. So uh, definitely a little boost in performance there as well. Thanks for tuning in guys. If you like the video, consider hitting the like button. If you don't like it, hit the dislike button. And if you want to see more like this or just tech videos from me, consider subscribing to the channel. All right. Thank you very much, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.